Storybox Audio. Storybox Audio. Storybox Audio. Storybox Audio.
search the earth below. If I make my bed in hell, no matter where I go, where can I run from his spirit? Where can I go from his presence? Even in the deepest depths, no matter where I go, no matter where I go, no matter where I go, he's coming right behind me. He's coming chasing after me. If it's in the highest mountain, if it's in the lowest if it's in the highest mountain, yeah. if it's in the lowest Good evening, St. Peter's Church and World Outreach, and I pray all is well. Thank you all for tuning in this evening for our evening Bible study. So thankful to be here and so thankful to have the opportunity to engage with you all. I pray that all is well. I want to go ahead and acknowledge everyone that's in and those that are just jumped into our virtual pews. Once again, thank you all for being so faithful to engaging and coming into our virtual pews. We're so thankful and we're so thankful and appreciative for you guys to be engaging with us virtually. At some point, I guess we're going to be having our Bible studies back on the campus, but I'm super thankful for this opportunity as well as so we can engage with you all. Let's see who made it into our virtual pews tonight. Definitely, thank you all for tuning in. Well, good evening, Nicole Williford. Thank you for tuning in. Miss Joanne Burnett, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. Michelle Cook, thank you so much for being a part tonight. Miss Ava Galloway, blessings to you. And uh, and uh, Larry, for tuning in tonight, blessings to you. Miss Corn uh, Cornelius Moorhead, thank you for tuning in. Shante Carter, blessings to you. Miss Monique Meshack, thank you for tuning in. Veronica Boston, good evening, good evening. Shante Carter, again, thank you for tuning in. Miss Felicia Gilliam, good evening, good evening. Jessica Stevenson, thank you for tuning in. Miss Felicia Gilliam, thank you for tuning in as well. Let's see here. Ernie Haas, blessings to you. Thank you for tuning in, big bro. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Listen, thank you all for tuning in. And typically, everybody doesn't have to put their names in if you're in, but I'm so thankful that you all decided to join tonight. I pray that all is well. Listen, we have another uh, Bible study tonight. I'm excited. Uh, tonight's Bible study is going to be really, really exciting. Once again, I'm staying in the Holy Week uh, uh, genre. I'm in that in that mindset. I'm only talking about uh, which is probably the greatest event ever in history of time. And we know that to be in this sense of where we stand right now. There's uh, no more no more songs or bins have been written more than about Jesus. And we're super excited about that. You know, you cannot help 
will want to know more about Jesus. So I'm so thankful that you all decided to join in. Once again, I want to give a great, great big hand of applause. If you don't mind joining me, applauding the production on Sunday morning. What an amazing show of skill, talent, and gifting and anointing. So thankful for, I know Mitchell and his team did a phenomenal job. Uh, he's over all of it. And then, of course, the worship part. And then you had the playwriting skills of none other than Miss Tanisha Turner. What a phenomenal job she did. I think this was her first play that she's ever, first play skit that she's ever written. And I did, she did a phenomenal job. I want to acknowledge her openly tonight on this particular platform. And I want to say thank you to her, all of the people that worked in the background, her team, all of those that were assisting her on Sunday morning, all of the actors, of course, Tony Gallimore, of course, uh, helping with the, uh, the videoing and the sound and the editing. Thank you so much, Tony, and all of those individuals that gave hands, all of the actors, parents, et cetera, they made sure that everyone got there to be a part, and all of the adults as well that were part of the uh, skits. It was so amazing, so good. Such a show of gifts and uh, uh, connection in our house, and I'm so excited about that. It was so, so good. It was done so well, super well. So once again, phenomenal. I cannot wait to see what happens this Sunday. You know, after those gunshots, I was like, uh-oh. I want to know what happens. So anyways, looking forward to Sunday morning. That was going to be Easter Monday. I want to go ahead and say this really quick. For those of you that get into the sunrise service, Bishop is going to be back with Renoda Presbyterian. So St. Pete's will be with Renoda Presbyterian on this Sunday morning at 6.30 a.m. at Renoda Presbyterian Church right there on Renoda Road. Uh, we're going to be with them and uh, we're going to go and we're going to mix in with them. Uh, there will be a communion and a word definitely from Pat, from Bishop as well as from Pastor Wright. So super excited about that. Can't wait. So that would be great to see some of you all uh, show for that morning. I know it's pretty early. So if you got kids, I get it. But if you don't or you can get out of the house and be a part, what an amazing uh, opportunity for us to engage with another uh, church as well as to be a part of another commemorative service on another Easter Sunday. Super thankful for every Resurrection Sunday. So let's get started tonight. Super excited about the Word of God. Of course, y'all know that. Y'all know how we get down. So get your Bibles out if you're going to be doing something virtual. That's totally fine. But anyhow, want to go ahead and get started tonight and want to be uh, 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 respectful of your time. So let's get some prayer in and let's get started. Father, we're so thankful for the Word of God. We honor the Word. We're so thankful for you, oh God. So thankful for the opportunity that we can engage with you. So thankful for the opportunity to come and to be sat down and taught of the spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. You are the teacher. You are the helper. You are the revealer of truth. You are the very spirit of truth. Illuminate the word of God tonight. Give us understanding. Give us a better revelation and knowledge of who Jesus is. Tonight, Jesus, we ask for an encounter with you. We want to encounter you, Jesus. We want to encounter your presence. We want to encounter your word. We want to encounter the experience that you went through on Holy Week, oh God. And I'm so, th I'm so thankful. Uh, that we can uh, be students and be tutored of you tonight by the Spirit. Holy Spirit, uh, I take over our members. I take our members even now, our, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, and just I bring them into subjection to the Word of God tonight, that we may learn of you and receive an impartation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, excited again to uh, be able to engage with you all. And listen, thank you all for tuning in, no matter what platform you're watching from, whether it be Instagram, uh, YouTube, and or Facebook. Blessings to you all. Thank you for tuning in. So let's get started. Definitely. Um, the theme for this year, and that's something that we've been consistently in, is definitely 2024, the year of more and more through perfecting God's love. Yes, perfecting God's love. Uh, definitely, that's coming out of Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. Uh, save the family, save the children. That is what we are about. Super excited. Listen, and don't forget, baby dedication is going to be on Sunday morning. It's always a pleasure to see the little babies being lifted up by Bishop and then pass over to Lady Joyce and pass back to the family and parents. What an amazing experience that we have uh, in in our church and our church community as we continue to put uh, blessings on the babies that they may be blessed and then cared for by the godparents, um, then back to the parents. But anyhow, let's go. Today, today is the best day of my life. This year is the best year of my life with God. Come on, church, spiritual greatness, physical greatness, financial greatness, mental greatness, social greatness, emotional greatness, and a long, healthy, peaceful, and prosperous life with God. Come on, Mark 10 and 27 says, and with Jesus looking upon them said, and Jesus looking upon them saith, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. I want you to know tonight that there are some things that it's impossible for you to do by yourself. It's impossible to do by yourself. But with God, all things are possible. So when you add that with, when you put that with there, all things are possible. It's, it's easier to forgive with God. It's easier to get over that hump with God. It's easier to get out of bondage with God. It's easier to walk out of scenarios and situations that you felt like mentally you were not going to be able to make it through with God. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity tonight 
then I can say that for myself. So let's get started. Excited about tonight's message. Now, tonight's message is Love Lifted Me. Yes, Love Lifted Me. What an amazing song. I grew up listening to this song. And, uh, you know, my, you know, typically at my church, you know, we had an amazing, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 piece choir, not, not a lot. But anyways, they did an amazing job and we would sing some of the old traditional songs. And this is one of those particular songs. But as I think about today, as we're looking at, as we're celebrating Holy Week, we're getting into it. I'm thinking to myself, it wasn't sin that put Jesus on the cross. Now, I know he died for our sins, but it was love that lifted Jesus to that cross. And I want you guys to hear that. tonight. I really want you to hear my heart tonight as I come uh, from the scripture in the text. As I try to point out uh, the, 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 the flamboyant love that God has and that he even sent his only begotten son, Jesus, into this earth to die for the sins of the world. But the reality was it wasn't just about sin. It was about the love of God. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever that believed in him. So it was love that put him on that cross, not sin, not sin. I just want you to understand. Now we understand the purpose of him going to that cross and the purpose of the blood being shed, but it was love that put him on that cross. Let's get started. Let's go. I got three, uh, three different uh, scriptures I want to give to you tonight. Uh, we're going to come out of the book of John. Uh, we're going to come back out of Philippians. Then we're going to do another one out of Romans. Then we'll get into the three points. We'll get started tonight. So make sure you got your Bibles wide open, got your notes and whatnot. And listen, I'm telling you, three, get at least three things tonight. You want to walk away with at least three points that you can engage with and actually go share with someone else, share with somebody. Virtually right now, if you watch my way of Facebook, you can do your sharing right now. You can go and hit that share button. And everybody that you're engaging with is going to be seeing this message tonight. Or you can do it on the same thing on Instagram as well. Or you can get on the text. Say, hey, join me on YouTube. Turn that flat screen on to YouTube. Go to my church, SPWOC uh, uh, Church. Or SPW, St. Peter's Church in World Outreach Center. Go to that page. We got a live service going on right now. But anyways, let's get started. John chapter 19, verse 5 through 11. Now here in John chapter 19, I want you guys to know what's happened. Of course, uh, we know that on Sunday, uh, um, well, this past Sunday was Palm Sunday. So, you know, Palm Sunday is the Sunday where literally Jesus rides into town on a donkey, a borrowed donkey at that. Um, a regular guy just on the top of a donkey just coming in. Of course, they they pulled all of, they pulled our palm branches to, 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 to bow and to worship before God and praising God, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. So they were acknowledging his, his lordship, acknowledging him as, as, as a Messiah, the coming Messiah. But the reality of it was most Jews were looking for somebody valiant coming in to help to bring justice and power with an iron fist, right? They wanted to see some level of justice, them coming in and killing out all of those that's been attacking them, et cetera. But the reality was here Jesus comes in on a donkey, a borrowed donkey, very humble, uh, very, very uh, uh, indifferent to what they were expecting. And so here we know one day they're singing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Then we get to where we are tonight. Now, where we are tonight, so you think about this, Jesus rides into town. He's already done his business. He's already had a couple of meals. Now he's having his final meal He's washing feet of the disciples, doing all of that, gets up preparing them. He looks at Judas, go and do what you're supposed to be doing. Judas goes and gets the army. And here we go. We pick up here in John 19. Now, understand this. Judas went to get an army. It was an army of 600 men. 600 men came after Jesus. One man. 600 men came after Jesus. You know, the disciples scattered. So, you know, they, they didn't want the smoke. But anyways, Peter wanted a little bit of, but you know what it is. Let's get started. John chapter 19, verse 5 through 11, right here. Then came Jesus forth wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. So mind you, these soldiers had knitted a crown of thorns because they were teasing him as the king of the Jews or as the king of the people. And they made this crown of thorns, this thorn. So literally, and they pressed that upon his head. Now, literally, figuratively for me, that was for my mind to be renewed. Whatever you pierce Jesus with, I got the benefit of it. So that's for a renewed mind. So that crown of thorns represents a renewed mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2, uh, 1 and 2. Also, and a purple robe. You know, purple is a representative of royalty. So they wrapped him in with a purple robe and they literally cast lots for his clothes. And that's scripture, that's prophecy. So they ripped his clothes apart, cast lots for it. They were betting for it. But anyways, the reality of it was that was a keepsake for them, not even realizing what they were keeping, right? But the reality of it going forward, here we are tonight talking about here Jesus is. Now, mind you, Jesus has already been beat. He's already been whipped with a cat of nine tails. Um, he's already been spit on. He's already been slapped around by all of these soldiers, been disrespected. And literally, he took all of that for us. 
all of that for us. He was a man free of sin, but he took all of that simply just for us. And so I want to get your minds ready and where we are tonight, just in the reality of what Jesus had to go through this week. Literally, he's been beat. He was literally beat have to death. The Bible says, we go back to Isaiah 53, which is a prophecy. He was beat so bad that you couldn't even recognize him. He was unrecognizable. He was beat that bad. Let's move on. And Pilate said unto them, behold the man. And I underline that the man, not the God, not the King, not the Lord, not the King of Kings, not, not Jesus the Christ, but the man here. When the chief priest, therefore, an officer saw him, they cried out, saying, crucify him, crucify him. Now, just the day before, you know, just, just moments before, they're saying, hey, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Like, like literally, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And it's interesting, be very careful of those people that praise you. They almost may turn around and say, crucify you at the exact same time. It is, and it happens every day. So be care, very careful with, with, with um, stardom and becoming popular, because at one point, they're going to praise you, but at another point, they're going to say, crucify him. So understand that, and I totally understand, you know, <laughs> out of the same tongue, they can say blessing and also say cru crucify him at the exact same time. Let's move on. Verse 7, Pilate said unto them, now mind you, Pilate, now, let, now let's just take a minute with Pilate. Now Pilate, of course, was, was the man. Pilate was in charge. He was in control. He was, he was running the court. He was doing the thing. Now Pilate's wife, just a night or two before this, had a vision or a dream, literally, that Jesus was innocent. And she was troubled by that dream. And she woke Pilate up and said, listen, you cannot crucify this guy. Listen, he's innocent. Don't bring him any harm. Listen, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. And so literally, listen to what Pilate said. Pilate said unto them, take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law. They live by that law, baby. We have a law. And by our law, we ought to die. Now, be very careful because, you know, as we poke fun at them having a law, we have to be very careful not to go back under the law ourselves. We're under grace. We're not under the law. We're under grace. What is What, what, what grace are we under? We're under to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, our mind, soul, and our body, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's the grace we're under. We're under the grace of Jesus Christ. We're under the grace that he had died for our sins. That's what we're under now. But here, they were still under the law. He says, we have a law, and by our law, he ought to die. So literally, since Jesus has been on the scene for at least two and a half years or whatnot, they've literally been trying to catch him in something that they can kill him. They wanted to catch him in something so they can crucify him, get rid of him, because he was pulling, he was pulling away their attention. He was challenging them. No, isn't it, isn't it funny that 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 uh, the Jews didn't want anybody to challenge them? Isn't it funny that people in authority typically don't want to be challenged, right? They don't want to be challenged. And I'm not talking about our leadership. What I am saying is authority does not like to be challenged, especially authority. Uh, that that is going the wrong way. You can look at even in our community these days, typically when people that are uh, in these great positions, they don't want to hear what humanity has to say. They want to stick on their high horses and say what they want to say. That's why we have issues with wages, um, school systems and public public education, because nobody wants to hear anybody else. They just want to sit in their spaces and rule with an iron fist. We got to be very careful of that. But anyway, we have a law and by our law, we ought to die because he made himself the son of God. This is what they were accusing Jesus of. This was the actual case of the chief priest. They said he has made himself the son of God. He has made himself the son of God. Verse eight, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more, he was more, he was the more afraid. Because his wife has already told him, listen, I don't know about this thing. Now, mind you, I don't know how many people died this type of death, but I'm promising you, his wife probably wouldn't waking up in the middle of the night saying, hey, I don't know about this one. But anyways, verse 9, and went again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Underline that in your Bible. Pilate says pretty much, who are you? Who are you? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then, then said Pilate unto him, speakest thou not unto me? Like, how dare you not speak to me? Me? Are you kidding? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? How many people say that? Do you know who I am? You mean you walk up in here and you don't say hey to me? You mean you walk up in here and you don't acknowledge me? He says, knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Pilate is literally standing on his high horse saying, bro, I have power to take you up out of here. I also have power to free you. 
you better recognize. Come on now. Verse 11, Jesus answered. And I love this part. I love this part. Now, mind you, Jesus has been beat. He's been smashed. He's going through all types of stuff. And here, I love it. Here he says, thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee have the greater sin. And that's the son of perdition. That's Judas. The reality of it is, he's like, bro, listen, <laughs> don't play with me, man. Don't play with me, man. Now, listen, I have humbled myself to the point that it's not my will, but it's God, not God's will to be done. And I'm going to go through this thing, but not you, bro. Like, not you. Not you. Not right now. Like, like you don't have enough to even trigger me. <laughs> you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not even a problem to me. The problem is this brother who, <laughs> who snitched me out. But, of course, he was being led of the enemy anyhow. Let's move on. Philippians 2, 1 and 8, KJV version. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 8. The Bible says here, if there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy and be like-minded. Listen to what we're saying tonight here. Listen to the scripture be like-minded. This is how we should be thinking as believers. Listen to what Paul is saying here. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. If there be any, uh, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy and be like-minded. Listen to what Paul is saying. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, just like Jesus. Let's move on. Verse three, he says, let nothing be done through strife. Bishop just got through talking about strife when it comes to Abraham and Lot and their herdsmen. Because when strife is functioning, your faith can't work. So we got to keep strife out. We can't get in. We can't allow strife to get in. He says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, lowliness coming low, lowliness. Bring that down, sir. Bring that down, ma'am. Lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. So automatically, my mind, when I wake up every day should be, I am esteeming others better than myself. I am to get low, even though I don't pray good, even though I feel the anointing, even though I've been to church this week, even though I've tired this week, I need to stay low. Even though I hear the voice of God, I need to stay low. He says, esteem each other better than themselves. Verse four, he says, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So don't judge man by his own stuff. Look upon him as, as we look on other people. Don't, you know, we have to be very careful because we're quick to do that. We're quick to put people in our, their places and we're judging them mentally or even quietly we're even doing it. Verse five, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The same mind that was in Christ Jesus, he said, let this mind, Paul is saying, let this mind being you. And here we go in verse six, who being in the form of God, thought not thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So here it is, you know, Paul is saying, listen, we're talking about a mindset here. We're talking about a mindset. Everything, everything here lately over the last few years, seven or eight years, is maybe 10 plus years has been about mindset, changing your mindset, getting the right mindset, a winner's mindset, a believer's mindset. I'm telling you saying here, this is the mindset that you and I need to have. To not be equal with God, put himself in the form of a servant, Let's continue to read here. But made himself of no reputation. That's the mindset that we need to have. I don't care what position you hold. I don't care who you are on your job in the community or whatever. It no matter what status that you have, that you and I should literally make ourselves of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. This is Jesus. This is literally he humbled himself. We need to come into a mindset of being humble, a mindset of being humble to put ourselves under subjection of something that's more greater than us. Come on, church. And he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And I love this part because sometimes we're saying, well, how much do I have to take, Lord? How much do I have to put up with? How much of this do I have to take? Jesus became obedient unto death. And he sets, literally, he sets the scale. He's, he, he literally, he, he sets the bar. Jesus sets the bar. So if he became obedient unto death, then, then what are we asking? What are we really asking? Even the death of the cross. My last scripture. Now, this is coming from the Amplified Version. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Listen to this. This is good. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. King James Version says, while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for us. Come on, come on, Amplified Version. Teach us something tonight. Verse 9, therefore, since we have now been justified, meaning we are declared free of the guilt of sin by his blood, how much more? There's that more word again. How much more certain is that? Is it that we will be saved from the wrath of God through who? Through Jesus. So here we see the really in Romans chapter 5, not only are we to humble ourselves, not only are we are to, to get low, but we're also being taken care of. Our bill has been paid of sin and debt, and, and, but we've also been justified by the blood of Jesus. We're going to have some fun tonight. So number one, powerless. We're going to talk about power, powerless. Number two, humility. Number three, justified. Let's get started. Let's go to Romans chapter 13 as we're talking about being powerless. Paul, I mean, Pilate comes to Jesus and said, listen, don't you know that I have the power to crucify you? Don't you know I have the power to scourge you? I have the power to do whatever I want to do to you. I have also the power to release you. Jesus looks at this man. He said, man, you ain't got no power. <laughs> you ain't got no power. He said, the power you have is subject unto heaven, bro. Like you, you, you have no power over me. Let's move on. Verse uh, Romans 13, one through two. The Bible says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Every soul be subject unto who? Higher powers, not earthly powers, higher powers, for there is no power but of God. There is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Now, now those of us that function in the earth in, in ordained power, if you look at police officers, they're sworn in. That's an ordination. You look at pastors, they have they have a, a ceremony where they're licensed to pastor. They, they, they go through a process to have receive ordained power, right? That's ordained power. But understand that the reality of it here, whosoever therefore resisted the power, listen to this, resisted the ordinance of God. So here, Jesus says, I'm going to submit to this power because I understand that if I don't, then I'm going to resist the ordinance of God. But he submitted to the power at Gethsemane, not under the, not under the voice of Pilate. Pilate was just, Pilate was just <laughs> he was just a part of the scenery. Pilate was just part of the play. He was just part of the show. He wasn't the authority there. I mean, he was authority. He was ordained authority. But Jesus submitted himself under something greater than that. Let's move on. Anyways, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. And Jesus understood that. If, it, I, if I do not do what my father's asked me to do, then I'm going to reap the, the consequences of that. And I'm telling you every day that you and I choose not to, there are consequences that lie at the door of disobedience. There are consequences that lie at the door of our lack of obedience. Let's move on. Now, let's go. We're getting this started. First one, first page, I mean, the first uh, selection of a bullet points. Jesus rebukes the arrogance of Pilate. Now, 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 so Jesus was submitted to his authority. He was submitted to his power. He wasn't being unruly. He wasn't being, you know, out of place. He was submitted in his spot. He never, he never fought back or anything. The Bible says, as a lamb going to the slaughter, that's what Jesus, he was there. He didn't say a word, but here he rebukes the arrogance of Pilate. When Pilate says, don't you know that I have the power? He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, Slim. Hold up, boss man. <laughs> Hold up, bro. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Nah, bro. Nah, 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 nah. That's, how, that's not going like that. So he rebukes the arrogance of Pilate. Then also Pilate's providence didn't include the Lamb of God. You know, Pilate had providence over, literally over a group of people, but it wasn't the Lamb of God wasn't part of that group of people. Now, you know, so understand. So, so, we, so Jesus made himself subject to the law of the Lamb, but the reality of it is Pilate didn't have that power. He made himself subject to something that his father ordained. Come on, church. No power to scourge or to crucify. Pilate had no power to do those things. The reality. But Jesus is saying, here, literally, you don't have power to do those things to me. I surrender myself. I submit myself to these things. Right. I love. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs 26, verse four and five. Proverbs 26, four and five. I love this. This, this is this is something that has always been a little puzzling to me in the scripture. But it, it's good when you look at it. We love the Proverbs. Proverbs 26, four and five. The Bible says, and this is exactly what Jesus did earlier. He says, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. So he asked Jesus a silly question. Jesus didn't answer that question. He says, who are you? Jesus is like, I'm not answering that question, bro. Like, like, if you need to know who I am, then why are we arresting me? Like, like, really? Come on, bro. Like, really? But listen to what verse five says. He says, answer a fool according to his folly, 
lest he be wise in his own conceit. So he's saying, reply to this fool as that pride builds up unless he thinks that he's right, unless he thinks he knows what he's talking about. So sometimes you have to get people straight and get people taken care of. You know, we just had that conversation with a family member. No, no, no. You, you, you need to know your place. Know your place. I want to read that as well in the uh, uh, New Living Translation. I want you guys to catch that Proverbs 26, uh, 4 and 5. Uh, Jesus did not respond the first time because literally it, it was out of arrogance. And, 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 and literally, uh, Pilate was out of place. Right here, uh, uh, Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. In, in New Living Translation, he says, don't answer the foolish arguments of fools. Whenever there's fools around you, I love it. David says, you know, I was done with silence. You know, David, David wanted to say something, but he didn't. You have to find yourself. Some days you got to tell yourself, abort, abort. Don't respond to that. Sometimes, sometimes some things come to you just to trigger you. Don't be triggered. Don't be triggered. And sometimes we have slight triggers. We got slight triggers. Don't allow anybody to trigger you. Don't, don't respond to that. Don't, don't respond to fools. You know, you know, what I'll say sometimes is that's a smart people question. You know, I, I don't I don't I don't get into I don't I, I try not to. I try. I really I try hard. I try hard. Verse five. But be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. So if you don't respond to it, then they'll think that they're right. And they'll think that they got something and they have nothing. Actually, they have really nothing. Let's get started. I mean, let's get started. Let's move on to. Uh, uh, right here, John 18, 4 and 8. I wanted to read this part as well as we're talking about literally, and I love this part here, talking about how Jesus responds, how Jesus responds. And this is John 18, 4 through 8. John 18, 4 through 8. I love this here. Now, mind you, this is this is at the betrayal. Now, now mind you, they're coming to arrest Jesus. Now, mind you, we're talking about powerless. I'm telling you, humanity is powerless without the help of God. We are powerless. We are rendered powerless. We have no power. We have no strength. And Pilate had no power, not over God, not over, not over the son of God either. But I want you to I want you to see an open show of the powerlessness that they had. We're going to read in John chapter eight when Judas brings the soldiers into the garden uh, where Jesus had been praying to arrest him. Let's go to verse four. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come unto him, went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? So he sees the soldiers whom seek ye. Verse five, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, he says, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. He stood with the soldiers. Verse six, and as soon as they he had had, as soon, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. That's how much power was on Jesus. Now that's power. A power that didn't even physically touch them. They fell to their feet. It was so much power, so much anointing on his life when they came to arrest Jesus. And I really believe, I really believe that God had built him up in that time of prayer so he could endure, you know, all of this punishment he was about to go through. He had built him up that he can go through these things, which is important here. I, I want to I want to uh, uh, put a put a pause right here really quick. That's why it's important that you spend time in prayer. That's why it's important that you spend time in the word because you don't know what you're about to encounter tomorrow. You don't know what you're about to encounter today. And if you don't go into that thing full of the word and full of prayer, you may fail the test. You'll fail the test. Even with Jesus, when he was tempted and led of the Lord, uh, tempted to go up into the wilderness, he came out full of the power. I want you to know that we must prepare ourselves. There will be seasons of your life that God will call you on a fast. There will be seasons of your life that you'll lose a taste for food. There will be seasons of your life that you'll, you'll lose a taste and you'll lose a desire to watch TV and to, and to be bothered by folk. God will call us into a place. Jesus went up with a tree. He went up with uh, Peter, James, and John. He went up with three disciples. He went up, he, he, he separated himself from the other disciples and he went up to pray. He spent some time in prayer, but the thing was, he was preparing himself for what he was about to go through. Listen, he was beat to death. He was beat to death. You know, just like when you're about to go have surgery, you have to go do pre-op. You have to go get, be prepared, prepared for your body to go through those things. He, the Lord prepared him. He gave him spiritual and he gave him spiritual. <laughs> he gave him spiritual anesthesia. He gave him spiritual medicine to endure this, this beating he was going to have to take. 
Because we go back to Isaiah 53, the Bible says it pleased God to bruise him. It pleased God to allow Jesus to go through these things because he's reconciling the church back. But listen, Jesus had to spend time in prayer. If you do not spend time in prayer, you will strike back. You will hit back. You will cuss back. You will you will hate back. No, we don't return uh, evil for evil or railing for railing. No, we love. We walk in the gifts of the spirit. But here Jesus is being tested even before he goes through it. And so literally, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to their feet. There was such a power on him. Verse 7, then asked he them again, who seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth, verse eight, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Let my disciples go. You came for me. Don't fool with them. Don't fool with them. You know, what an amazing show of the preparation that God had gave to the son of man. Come on, church. Let's move on to the second one. Humility. That was talking about the powerlessness of Pilate, the power of 600 troops for one man. It reminds me of Elijah. (laughs) The king and the queen literally sent, literally, they sent armies after Elijah, one man of prayer. That shows you about a powerful prayer life. The enemy knows who you are when you stay on your knees. The enemy knows who you are when you resist him. The enemy knows who you are. Jesus had resisted the devil. He had, he had literally, he had conquered the devil in, in, in the wilderness. He passed the test, spirit of the pride of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. He passed the test. The enemy knew who he was. And the Lord built him up. The Bible says in Jude 20, building ourselves up, praying in our most holy faith. Don't you go into that meeting without prayer. Don't you go into that conversation without prayer. If you know that things are triggering to you, you go in and build yourself up in prayer. You build yourself up in the things of God. Build yourself up in the word. Don't you dare leave that house. Clothe yourself in humility. Put on righteousness. Put on the armor of God. Don't you leave that door. You don't know what you're going to face when you leave out. Cover those babies. You don't know what they're going to face when they go to that classroom. You don't know what that teacher may be speaking over your children. My daughter just said some things to me tonight about something that a teacher has been saying in class. You better cover those babies. Prepare them. Come on, church. James chapter 4, verse 6 through 10. I'm talking about the humility of God. But he giveth more grace. There's that more again. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, underline that he resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. He resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Verse 7, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves to God. What do you mean, Jason? That means humble yourself before God. Receive his word. Acknowledge his word. Walk in obedience according to the word of God. Do what the word says do. Not what Jason says do. Do what the word says do. Do the word. Study to show yourself approved unto God for a workman or a workwoman. Need of not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the words of truth. Do what God has called you to do. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That means submit to his word. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Resist the devil and he will flee. Verse eight, draw nigh to God. This is how you build humility. This is how we are. This is how we are clothed in humility. We draw nigh to God. We don't run away from God like Adam and Eve did. No, 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 no. We come to God even when we make mistakes. Go to God. Come to God. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Come on, church, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. That's how you that's how you become humble. You repent. Cleanse your hands. Get it right. Purify your hearts. David said in Psalms 53, literally, come on, ye double-minded, be afflicted and mourn. This is something that the church has got to learn how to endure. There's going to be some affliction that you're going to have to learn how to endure. You're going to have to walk through some things. You're going to have to walk through some tough stuff. Some of y'all are coming out of some tough stuff. Some of y'all are moving into some tough stuff. Listen, I'm telling you, be prayed up and get in the word and you can handle it. I'm telling you, you can't. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy heaviness. Every day is not going to be a happy day. Every day is not going to be. It's not going to be boiling over. I'm telling you, there's going to be some days. It's going to be some rough days. I mean, hey, it's going to be some rough days. I want to go back really quick because here, you know, here in James 4, he says, but he giveth more grace. 
Wherefore he said, God is the problem. What does he give more grace? The Bible says, because my grace is sufficient for thee. Paul was complaining that, listen, this thing is buffeting my flesh. Man, this is getting on my nerves. God, give me some relief. Give me some relief. God says, no, nah, Paul, I can't give you any relief because I didn't get any relief on that cross. I didn't get any relief. So, so I have to allow you to go through some things. You, you got to understand that, that your flesh is going to be persecuted. There's going to have to be some things that you're going to take. I'm telling you, Bishop's got a powerful message coming up. Don't you miss the next three faith nuggets. Bishop's got some powerful nuggets that's about to drop. You better catch that. But anyhow, right here, he says he giveth more grace. Why does he give more grace? Because your flesh is going to be buffeted. You, he said, literally, grace is sufficient for you. Grace is going to get you through. Sometimes we want to be removed from the storm. I can't move you from the storm because the storm has a purpose in your life. What you're going through right now has a purpose in your life. It has a purpose. It's going to prosper until the place it has been sent because gold has to be refined. You have to go through a refiner's fire and a refiner's fire. You got to go through some things. You know, you know, like 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 Joseph, he came out of that. I mean, Jacob, Jacob came, Jacob came out of that thing with a limp. He had to wrestle with that angel. Which literally the Bible says he was wrestling with himself. But you got to wrestle with some things. Listen, life be life. Life is not easy. And if you're going to pass the test and receive the reward, you're going to need the grace of God. But he says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he's going to flee. Come on, Nicole. He says, draw nigh unto God. He says, come closer to me. Come closer. Don't run away from me. You know, we were singing that song Sunday morning. He's there. He said, if I search the, the high, the heavens high, I'm going to see you. If I search hell below, I'm going to see you. He's there. Wherever you go, he will make his abode with you. He says, draw nigh unto me, and I'm going to draw nigh unto you. That's the law of God. If you pursue me, I'll pursue you. But if you move away from me, I have to move away from you. He said, he said literally, if you, if you be, if you be uh, embarrassed about me, if you be, uh, if you be, <laughs> if you, if you don't acknowledge me, I can't acknowledge you. No, 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 no. Draw nigh unto me. He says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. There will be a season of weeping. It's what the Bible says. We can go back to the Beatitudes of Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are they that mourn. Listen, you're going to go through some things in the earth. You're going to go through some things as a believer. And you're going to want God to lift that pressure up. But I'm telling you, just make it on through it. If you go on through it, it's something better on the other side. You look at the children of Israel. They had to make it through the wilderness. They had to go through a dry place. They had to go through a place that they were starved of everything but the word of God, the manna from heaven. Come on now. And water from the rock. He gave them the, the basic essentials of what they need. Some season of your life, you're just going to get basic essentials. And here Jesus is telling us and teaching us humility. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Verse 10, I love this right here. He says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. When you humble yourself in the sight of God, he's going to lift you and I up. Come on, church. Let's go through these points here. Here we see a gospel pattern proposed to our imitation. We're supposed to imitate God. This is exactly what Jesus had to do. Jesus would not ask us to do anything that he didn't have to go through. He would never ask us to bear anything. And the fact that he can go through it lets you and I know that we can do it as well. But we've got to follow this pattern. If we don't follow this pattern, then we're going to be unsuccessful. And what we're going to end up doing is aborting it. And the more you abort it, you're just making more laps in the wilderness. You're turning something that could have happened in three to four weeks into 40 years. Come on, church. He says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. This is one of the main things that's going to help you and I understand humility, getting the mind of humility, being, I'm being mindful of humility. That means, that means I'm having a mind of Christ. I'm letting this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. That I'm thinking, I'm seeing myself in a form of a servant. That, I, that, that, that I'm esteeming others better than myself. I'm, I'm beginning to develop humility in my life. Also, Jesus was eminently humble. What do you mean by eminently, Jason? It's to a noble degree, or he was very humble. Not over humble, but very humble. He made sure that he esteemed others better than himself. No matter what they had, no matter what they didn't have. Jesus came up on plenty of people that had nothing, not even their eyesight. He came up on plenty of people, but he honored them. He honored them by ministering unto them. Come on, church. Come on, church. A selfish spirit is destructive to Christian love. You must know that. Somebody needs to write that down. A selfish spirit 
is destructive to Christian love. And the funny thing is, you never can you 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 rarely can you rarely can locate selfishness until the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. Rarely do people say, "Hey, I'm selfish." They don't acknowledge their selfishness, but let the Holy Spirit show you something. You know, I, I used to think that I was such a giving person, and I told you guys this the other Sunday until Krispy Kreme donuts. I ain't want to share. And it was it is what it was. I'm I'm good now because I don't even eat them no more. But the reality of it is, and that's probably why I don't eat them. I don't deserve to eat them because I ain't learned how to share. <laughs> but a selfish spirit is destructive to Christian love. It'll tear it down. Listen to this. This is something you need to hear. The lowest step of humiliation was dying the death of the cross. Do you know that crucifixion was the worst type of death that anybody could die? Jesus, God himself chose the worst type of death than any man that ever was on this earth, walk this earth would have to do. Literally. He literally gave him the death penalty. If you get in mind lethal injection or electrocution, anything worse than that, Jesus had to die the worst death. And it was humiliation. It was, it was a time of hum humiliation. Even in the movies that we've seen, at least he had some covering on his waist. But in true, true crucifixions, they stripped you naked. You had nothing on. They wanted to humiliate you and take all of your dignity away. And literally, by the time that Jesus hit the cross, he was dead in at least six hours. Why? Because they had beat him to death before he got to the cross. I want you to know that he had been humiliated and beat to death by the time he got to the cross. Jesus appeared in the nature and the habit of man. He appeared in the nature and the habit of man. First uh, Peter 5 and 5. Let's go there really quick. We're running out of time. First Peter 5 and 5. As we're going through Holy Week, I want to always keep you mindful of what the Father was going through for us, for the church. He was doing this for the church. Yes, he was. For the church. First Peter 5, 5 and 6. Bible says here, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed, be clothed with humility. So that means we put on humility. We have to put on humility. So before you go have that, that conversation with your spouse, put on humility. Before you have that conversation with your kids, put on humility. Before you have the conversation with your parents or grandparents, etc., put on some humility. Come on, church. For God resisteth the proud. There it goes. And God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. In due time, you're going to be exalted, casting all of your care on him, for he cares for you. I want you, guys to, I want you guys to take a look with me. Go with you quick. I just took time today to write down this morning uh, in my time of, uh, of, of prayer. This just came to me. When, when we think about what Jesus went through on the Holy Week, this came to my heart. In Isaiah 53, because I want you to know that sin didn't put Jesus on the cross. It was the love of God. It was his love. It was the love that put him on the cross. So it was love that lifted him. It was love that lifted him to the cross. But anyways, in Isaiah 53, look at all that he takes for us. Look at all that he takes for us. He was despised. Now we're talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He came from deity. We're talking about the, the, the word manifested in the flesh. He was rejected. Come on, come on, Miss Rita Cooper. He was rejected, Scott. Uh, many, he, he was a man of sorrows. Now, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. He was a man of sorrows. He was acquainted with grief. Acquainted with grief. So sometimes you like, you know, you know uh, I can't take this and I don't know when anybody's going through this. Jesus did. Jesus went through way more than you've gone through. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for the sins that we would commit. He was bruised for our iniquities of our forefathers. He was bruised for that. He was beat. He was beat until literally he was unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. And he was chastised so that we may have peace. He endured chastisement, correction, rebuke, so that you and I can have peace. Now, this was somebody that did no wrong. And he took it. And did not utter one word. Didn't wince. Didn't jump back at anybody. 
And sometimes when you're guilty, you got everything to say back. Or whether you're not guilty, you should use Jesus. The Bible says be like-minded, like-minded. Then he took the stripes so that we can be healed. Have you seen that cat of nine tails? You, you saw the passion of the Christ with me if you've been through an encounter. You saw that little metal thing that, piece, that had bones at the end of the chains. And literally, in my understanding, it was 40 stripes because there's 40 different diseases. He took 40 licks on that thing. And that thing went to clung and it stuck in your back and it was ripping the skin off. Are you kidding me? Man, I ran when there was a bell. I ran from a switch. If you bring that out, man, somebody going to jail. Somebody going to jail. I'm telling you right. Somebody going to jail. But the reality of it is Jesus took this just for me, just for you, just for you. Come on. Just for us, he took it. So when you have to go through something on the job, you have to go through something in a relationship. You have to go through something in the community. You have to go through something that may be racially uh, 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 incentivized. You may have to go through something that just may be indifferent to who you are or maybe indifferent to your status or who you are. Listen, look at what Jesus did for us. And he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. You know what the slaughter is? That lamb is going to die. He's not being just sheared. He's going to die. He's going to be lamb chops. Come on. Now. He was lit. And he opened not his mouth. He didn't say one word. I don't know about you, but whenever I see that pastor in the cross film, I always look at him and he's being beat. And I always see how he takes those licks. And I imagine in my heart, I imagine in my heart, Jesus, they're being beat. Like he was a criminal, beat like he was guilty, beat within an inch of his life, taking those licks and not saying one word. Can you imagine? How dare we? How dare we? How dare we go back on that? Do you understand the price that was paid for you? Love. Lifted Jesus. That was the love of God for us. That was a violent love. He took it. And mind you, he had the power at any time to shut it down. He had the ability within his own being to shut it down, but he surrendered it. He submitted himself. He submitted himself. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Can we just stop really quick, just for a moment? Can we just stop and just acknowledge what Jesus just acknowledge what Jesus did? Can you just put your hands up wherever you are? Father, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the beating, oh God. Father, thank you for the stripes. Thank you for the despisement that you received, oh God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you were spit on, Lord God, by 600 soldiers. You were smacked around, Lord God. You were, you were teased, Lord God, and you, you, were, you were beat, Lord God. You were kicked, and Lord God, all types of manner of evil and persecution came against you, your own flesh. Father, we're so thankful for the blood. I'm so thankful for your obedience unto death, oh God. I'm so thankful for your obedience. Oh, come on, come on. Let's just worship the Lord right now. Just, just for a moment, let's just acknowledge what he has done for us. Lord, I acknowledge what you've done for me, oh God. Thank you for the blood, oh God. Thank you for the stripes, oh God. Thank you for enduring my chastisement. Those licks belong to me. Those beatings belong to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we honor you this evening, oh God. Oh, Father, interrupt this moment, Lord God. Let your presence begin to flow in this place. Interrupt our homes, oh God. Interrupt what we got going on, Lord God, that we take time to show gratitude, that we take time to acknowledge who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you did what we couldn't do. Father, you did what even the law couldn't do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, worthy is the lamb that was slain. 
Come on, worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. 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 Come on, allow God just to come into your room. Allow him just to come in and minister unto you. Allow God to come in now and encounter your life right now. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for a revelation of the cross, oh God. Thank you for a revelation of that love, oh God. Thank you for helping us to understand, Lord God, the love, the breadth, the width, the height, and the depth of your love. That's beyond my understanding, oh God. It's beyond my understanding, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Jesus. 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 My last point, and I'll turn you loose. I got a few minutes. I'm sorry, I'm out of time, but I'll get these few ones in right here. The Bible says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight, we're talking about being justified now. Therefore, since we have been made, made right in God's sight, how? By faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for the church. We have peace with God because he humbled himself unto death. We have peace with God. And because we have that peace, he's now declared us righteous. He has justified us by that, act, that one act. That one act, he has justified us. Now we no longer have to go through the high priest. Now we no longer have to, you know, worry about the Ten Commandments. We don't have to worry about that anymore. No, we have to concern ourselves with the two commandments. To love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all our strength. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. And if we do those things... We are definitely doing the 10. Verse 2, because of our faith, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. We didn't deserve it. We didn't. We didn't. Why? Because we broke the law. But I'm so thankful that when I repented of my sins, that he forgave me and he established kingdom on the inside of me. And I was born again. Glory to God. And because I'm born again. Nevertheless, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that liveth on the inside of me. I'm now an earthen vessel. Come on, church, and I now have privileges by way of the kingdom. Yes, by way of Jesus' death, he has brought me back. He's gave me right relationship again with the Father. Everything I had in the garden has been restored unto my life, been restored unto my children and my family as long as they repent of their sins. Where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Last slide here. Jesus died to save us, not in our sins, but from our sins. I'm going to say that again. Jesus died to save us, not in our sins, but from our sins, which means that we should not stay in our sins. No. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. Get out of there. Get out of there. Move on. Go on down the road. Our privileges stream from Christ's blood. The privilege of healing. The privilege of deliverance. The privilege of the blessing. The privilege of salvation. The privilege of all the promises of God stream from that blood. Because that blood, because he bled for us. Because there was not a worthy sacrifice without what? The blood of Jesus. Can somebody type that in? The blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood, oh God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. We were without strength. We were without strength. We had a sad countenance. We, we, before Jesus, we had no hope. We were with people that no, had no hope. Jesus died also for the ungodly. My last scripture and we're done. My last scripture and we're done. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. And that's 20 and 21. Second, Second Corinthians 5, that's 20 and 21. Bless God, hallelujah. I'm so thankful for the word. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors. You are an ambassador for Christ. For Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. When Jesus died on that cross, 
over 2,000 years ago, the Bible had called us aliens. We were alienated from the promises of God. We were alienated from relationship with God. But when he died on that cross, I am telling you, church, immediately as we repented of our sins, we came right back into right relationship with God. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, which mean, literally means that we've been stored back into right relationship, which means that now all we have to do is pray in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you the blessings of God are ours. Yes, the blessings are yay, yay, and amen. Come on, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open. Verse 21, my last verse, and for he hath made him to be sin for us. Jesus was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It was a great exchange. Jesus came and did what the first Adam couldn't do. He came into this earth. He was born into sin. He was shaped in iniquity. But the reality of it was, literally, he learned the Torah. He learned the Old Testament. He spent time with the scrolls. He spent time in the Word. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that he was obedient unto the cross. Literally. But he was incorruptible. I was so thankful that, <laughs> that, 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 that corruption put on incorruption <laughs> and, and sanctified it. Come on, church. Listen, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. That's all I have for you. I went over my time. Listen, you're watching this for the very first time. And listen, I'm telling you what. God's got a plan for your life, sir. God's got a plan for your life, ma'am. Young college student, listen, you sitting there troubled by all of these things. I'm telling you what. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a plan for your life. I don't know how you came by way of this stream. Maybe somebody shared it. You just happen to be watching tonight. That's amazing. I'm telling you what. You may be watching this by way of repost three weeks from now, maybe a year from now. It doesn't even matter. But the reality of it is Jesus Christ came to die for your sins. And I'm telling you, you did such a good job. After he died for your sins, he went into hell. He went into hell for three days. After three days, he took captivity. He took the keys back that the, that the, uh, that the first Adam had lost. He lost the authority that we had in the garden. And, he, and he now, he's now sitting on the right hand of the Father. He was resurrected up out of that place. And he came and he gave you and I right relationship. Because of his obedience unto the cross. Because his obedience unto the death. Because of his obedience. He was despised. He was smitten. He was beat. He was spit on. He was slapped. He was smashed. He was beat within inches of his life so that you and I could be saved. The Bible says no greater love hath it than this. Then a man will lay down his life and he calls us friends. Now I'm doing my own research. I don't, try, I don't ask you to do this, but you know, when it comes to the Catholic church, they, they don't, they can't come to Jesus. They got to go through the, the, the other saints and they got to maybe talk to Mary. They can't just go straight to Jesus. Uh, uh, even the Muslims, they can't go straight to Allah. They, they have to, they have to stay in their place because they say, Allah, you're too good to come to this earth. Well, Jesus said, no, nah, I'm going to come to this or I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to come and teach you how to do it. That's why we're called Christians. Why? Because we, we have, we have, we're living Christ-like lives. That's why we have to be Christ-minded. But right now, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ died for your sins. All you have to do, sir, you all have to do, ma'am. All you have to do, college student, you're a young person. All you have to do is just say this after me. Say, listen, I believe in my heart that Christ died on the cross for my sins. Yeah, we're celebrating that this week. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I also believe that he didn't stop there. That he was rose. He rose from the dead. Yes, he did with captivity. And he had he had power in his hands and he was seated on the right hand of his father. He's now into a place of intercession just for me. I believe that the Bible says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, then I can be saved. All you have to do now is say, Jesus, come into my heart to stay. Yes, Jesus, come in and stay. Holy Spirit, seal me unto the day of your return. Seal me unto the day of your redemption. Teach me to be more like Jesus. Help me to be more like Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, it's already done. It's already done. I'm telling you what, you have now just been justified. You have now, literally, you're now declared righteous. Now, every promise of God that was given to us in the garden is now yours. It sure is. I was, now, listen, all I need from you really quick, really quick. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. I'm excited for you. Glory to God. The Bible says that all of heaven is rejoicing right now because one sinner repented. I'm so thankful for you. But listen, don't stop there. Don't stay in the emotion. I need you to give me a call. This is very, very important. This is very important. Listen to what I'm saying. Call the church in between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. tomorrow or this week. Give me a call at 10 a.m. I'm Eastern Standard Time. Give me a call. This number's on the screen, 336 
650-200-2000. Give me a call. Let me know what happened. Tell me all about it. I want to hear the whole story. But the reality of it is, also, I'm going to send you a free gift because I want to get connected. But I want to let you know what your next steps are. Next steps, you need to be baptized. You need to be baptized. Yes, you do. You need to join a good Bible-believing church. And I'm telling you what, I know of a good one that's going to be open this Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. It's going to be a powerful service. You need to be here. Just come and join us right here at St. Peter's Church, if you're local, right here at 3683 Old Lexington Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27107. Come right down here, and we have a seat just for you and your family. Bring your family. Bring your kids. Bring your cousin, bring your girlfriend, bring everybody, bring bring other college students, bring your high school students, bring them all, bring them all. And we have a place just for you. After you do that, definitely, once again, come this Sunday. I want to see you. I want to see you Sunday. Then get connected to this amazing church, but you got to be baptized. Now, if you're watching somewhere else, still give me a call at 336-650-0200. Uh, in between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., uh, make sure Eastern Standard Time, give me a call. I'll get you your free gift. But I'm going to challenge you to join a good Bible-believing church where you're located. If you can find you one, you go tell that pastor, go tell that preacher, sir, I just got saved. I accepted Jesus Christ. I was watching the streaming session. I, I prayed the prayer of salvation. Now I want to know my next steps. And literally, I'm telling you, God has plans for your life. Stay connected, stay in, and be everything that God has called you to be. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Listen, at this particular point in time, I want to receive a million dollar offering. I want to receive an offering at this particular point in time. So yes, the church, yes, we are also uh, tasked with receiving the offerings and the tithes. So today, this particular opportunity, we have three different ways that you can give. Number one, you can go to our website, sbwc.com. I want you to hit that sbwc.com, go into that website. You're going to see three buttons at the top of the screen. Click on those, click on those three buttons. You're going to go to a, you're going to see give on the next screen. Click on that give button. And you're going to see a push pay screen. Click on that push pay and put in the pertinent information. It's going to be all secure and you can give that way. Number two, you can download our app. Yes, you can download our app on an iOS phone or an Android phone. Download that app. Once that app acclimates on your phone, it's going to be a little hard on the bottom of the screen. Click on that heart and you can give that way as well. Do the exact same thing. Go through the prompts and go to hit the push pay. You can do the exact same thing. And also you can actually right now, uh, you can uh, you can come by the church uh, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come on by the church. We have security staff that's here all day waiting on just for you, just to make sure you have what you need. He'll, he'll take you, escort you right where you can give your offering on your own. Last but not least, you can also mail that in at P.O. Box 12369. That's Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27117. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, if I read that too fast, that's P.O. Box 12369. Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27117. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in. What an amazing opportunity to be with you. Listen, don't forget this Saturday morning, we will have prayer. It's going to be a virtual prayer. So we all be virtual this Saturday morning. But Sunday morning for sunrise service, we're going to be down. We're going to be at uh, at 6.30 a.m. We're going to be at Renault the Presbyterian celebrating sunrise service with Renault, Ren Renault the Presbyterian Church. Pastor Wright and Bishop are going to be doing their thing on that Sunday sunrise service morning. If you can get up that early, come and be with us. Bishop would love to see you. It's always an honor to, to do those things together, especially with other people. But it's such a commemorative weekend for us. It's one of the most major events of, of what we believe. So we're super thankful for that opportunity. But Bishop would love to see you. I would love to see you. I'll be there. But so thankful for you all tuning in today. And thank you guys for being such a blessing. At this particular point in time, I'm going to give you our announcements for the week. And I will release you. But I will see you again Saturday morning virtually for prayer. So have an amazing evening. And thank you all for tuning in. You guys are so, such a blessing. Once again, I want to say big shout out to uh, Tanisha Turner, uh, to Mitchell Goldsmith, and to uh, Tony uh, Gallimore, and all the amazing hosts of team uh, that were helping to uh, put the play together. It was such an amazing event. I was so blessed by it. All of the volunteers, all of the actors, all of the actresses, all of the young actors, all of the singers that came from other spaces. What an amazing service. Powerful, powerful job. Tanisha, girl, you're doing the thing. God bless you and that gift and that talent that God has gifted you with and the other team and the host of all the individuals that helped with that. Thank you, media team. Thank you, sound team, for doing a phenomenal job. Now we're going to have some announcements. I will see you Saturday morning for prayer. Peace. Good morning, St. Peter's members and online guests. Listen to the great things happening here at St. Peter's. March is National Women's History Month, commemorating and encouraging the study, observance, and celebration of the vital role women have in American history. Thank you to all women for your diverse contributions 
into society. Communion is one of the sacraments that unifies the Christian community. The Lord's Supper symbolizes the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross, which redeemed us from the curse of sin and his broken body, which heals all our infirmities. Today, we will partake of the Lord's Supper, reaffirming our knowledge and appreciation of the work of the cross as a church family and community. It's corporate prayer and fasting, and we invite the entire congregation to join us on Tuesday, March 5th through Thursday, March 7th. Our fast consists of reading the Word of God, drinking plenty of water, abstaining from meats, sweets, and breads. We will pray each evening by calling the prayer conference line. For additional information, please go to our website or mobile app. Hey you, yes you, mark your calendar for stand-up conversations with Bishop James C. and Lady Joyce Hash. The first group will be on Saturday, March 9th at 9.30 a.m. The Boomers and Gen X, ages 43 through 68. Parents and guardians, please bring your alphas, ages 5 to 10 years old. We want to hear from everyone, so stand up and let's begin a conversation. St. Peter's and Friends, we are excited to announce our impact, achievers, champions, and thrivers empowerment event that will be on our virtual platforms, Facebook and YouTube on Thursday, March 14th, 2024 at 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Share this event with your family and friends, and we will see you virtually on March 14th. You've got a lot of living to do, and we want to help you stay healthy, active, independent, and able to do everything that you want to do. Stick Center for Healthy Aging and Alzheimer's Prevention invites you to join us on Saturday, March 16th at 9.30 for the Healthy Living, Healthy Aging Educational Series. Please register by Sunday, March 10th, 2024. Hey you, yes you, mark your calendar for stand-up conversations with Bishop James C. and Lady Joyce Hash. The second group will be on Saturday, March 23rd at 9.30 a.m. Millennials and Gen Z, ages 11 through 42. Parents and guardians, please bring your alphas, ages 5 to 10 years old. We want to hear from everyone, so stand up and let's begin a conversation. St. Peter's Music and Arts Ministry will host The Encounter, a two-day production on Palm and Easter Sunday, March 24th and March 31st, during our 9.30 a.m. in-person virtual family worship experience. To our virtual audience, gather your family and friends to join you as you host a virtual watch party. This will be an awesome time of worship, praise, as we all bless, exalt, and honor God for his goodness. Our Gen 1 ministry is excited and committed to partnering closely with you in raising our next generation of Christian leaders. Every second and fourth Sundays at 9.30 a.m., the following classes are available. New Creations Nursery, kids six months to five years old. Kids Zone, kindergarten to fifth grades. 678 Street, grades six through eighth and Thrive High School and College. Parents and guardians, at 9.20 a.m., you can check in or first time register your child for you. Gen 1 Kids Zone, kindergarten through eighth grade, will be hosting an Easter egg hunt on Saturday, March 30th at 11 a.m. Kids invite a friend and parents and guardians bring a lawn chair and enjoy the outdoor festivities. All men, women, and youth ages 16 and older join us Saturday, March 30th, 8.30 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. In observance of Bishop James C. Hash's birthday, which is April 7th, together we would like to give one of the greatest gifts, the care of God's temple, the beautification of our building. Please bring a Swiffer Sweeper dry mop and a dry Swiffer Sweeper cloths, gain scent, 32 pack. 
please register via our website, mobile app, or email. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19 and 14. St. Peter's Church and World Outreach Center will have a special community baby dedication with the pronouncing of blessings upon each child by Bishop James C. and Lady Joyce Hatch. This memorable event will be on Easter Sunday, March 31st, during our in-person 9.30 a.m. family worship experience. Masks are optional for this special occasion. Registration ends Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Worship and honor God with your tithes and offerings through our confidential and secure options. St. Peter's mobile app on our website at www.spwoc.com, on site, and the many other ways you have already been giving. Once again, thank you for your generous contributions, and let's continue to confess that this year is the best year of our lives with God. Stay connected for current news and announcements, inspiration, and encouragement via our various digital and live stream platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, our website, mobile app, telephone text alerts, and our email blast link. Thanks for joining us this week.